Hello. Today what I want to do is go over the Wilderness Survival 24 hour course and the gear that's needed for that course. The Wilderness Survival 24 hour course was designed to offer you and train you in the skills needed to spend a few hours or a few days in the woods if you're ever in that survival situation. That could be if you're lost or you're stranded. Now hikers, fishermen, hunters, uh, ATV folk and so on, this can help anyone that is in our great outdoors. So this course is a 24 hour course. If you come at 9 a.m., you stay until the next day, 9 a.m. So throughout the day, I will be teaching you skills to help prepare you for the night to come. Now, like I said, you can use these same skills for just a few hours or even days. And you can also use these just throughout your life in the wilderness. If that uh, survival situation ever does arise, then if you practice these skills and become very confident in these skills, you can really increase your chances of survival if that need ever comes. But if it doesn't, you still have skills that you can enjoy for a lifetime. So how this course is going to run is we will show up in the morning, we will hike to our location, and then I will teach you throughout the day. We'll finish up before dark with the training covering your survival mentality, your gear, shelter, fire, water, and signaling. Taking these skills that you have just learned, you're going to be going to a spot, setting up your shelter again, collecting firewood and so on to prepare yourself for the night. You're going to be sleeping in your survival shelter. That way you experience how the bed feels, how you could make it more comfortable if need be, and so on. So you get the knowledge in the start of the day, th throughout the day, and then you experience what it would be like using these skills in a situation that is controlled, but you take this home, you learn it, practice it, and you can become very competent in these skills and they can truly increase your chances. Now we're going to go over the gear. First off, check the weather, prepare for the worst, and dress appropriately. Footwear is very important as well. Having enough food and water for the 24 hours is very important. So that's first thing is you're going to be making sure that your basic needs are covered. Food, water, and your first form of shelter, which is your clothing. I train with minimal gear because I want to show what it is recommended to carry when you go into our wilderness. And I show how to use the gear that I have in here and truly increase your chances of survival or truly enjoy your experiences in the wilderness. So just having a few items, most people may carry it. So the less I can get it down to that people can carry and still be safe, then that is my importance. To be able to get someone to carry something. Recommended gear can truly help. So this here is the 
gear that is listed on my course description. And this here is what I'm going to train with and you'll be using to spend a night in our forest. Let's talk knives. This here is my survival bush point, my design. But that knife there, it has a full tang, which means it's all one piece of metal with wood scales. It's got heft to it. I have split wood. I've trimmed trees. I've constructed shelters, made meals. This is a one tool option. Having a very nice, robust knife can make all the difference out here. If you have something with a small blade to take off finger-sized limbs that you may need to do fast, you're not going to do it. You want something that you can swing one, two chops, and you're cutting off limbs finger size. But you can also carve a toothpick because it's small enough to do that job as well. So this here has been a great knife. I'll leave a link down below. I have Reptile Toolworks that makes these for me and sells them. And they've been an awesome survival knife. I'm going to show you how to make a long fire and how to use it in conjunction with your shelter. And having a good buck saw or a folding saw can truly help you get your firewood fast. You cannot take down a six inch tree with a small folding saw that isn't gonna take you a very long time to do. This saw here, I've taken down eight, 10 inch trees with it. Takes a little while, but I still can. It's the same thing as a buck saw. Having a good saw for the course is very helpful because you're going to need a lot of firewood to spend the night in the forest. So a knife and a good saw is two of the recommended pieces of gear. Also, I've got a mirror here and a whistle. I actually have another whistle on my pack as well. These stay on my body, but I have one on my pack. So a whistle and a mirror as well. Fire kits can be very personalized and elaborate. Myself, I like to stick with simple and effective. Something that is very easy to do, but gives you great results. That is why this is my fire kit. What I have in here, first off, I have it in a bag just to keep uh, things dry. I've got two disposable clear lighters that I can see the fuel level in. I have a book of, or a box of wooden matches and, oops, this is a wood fiber and wax fire starters. I've got three here. These here burn for a long time. They're cheap and I have combustion devices to light them quickly. Now, by using fire, the proper fire prep and how to build a fire, I've got fast fire and very, very simple but effective. With this here, I can light many fires. With this, a lot of times I would not even need to use half of this little block, this one, and there's three here. So simple, very simple. Um, I've got these bricks here, fire starters. You can find them in different uh, uh, barbecue sections and such. Those fire starters, because they last a long time. That's what you want is something that lasts a while. So it will 
heat up and burn off any water on damp material if need be and also it gives you more time to get your fire into an established fire. You'll also need 25 feet at least of different cordages. So you can buy just paracord, a 50 foot uh, section or 25 foot section of paracord. I've used different twines like this as long as it's a sturdy twine. Mason twine works well. This here is a tarred bank line. And I've got like 25 feet here of paracord and this is uh, probably 20 feet of bank line. So a lot of times I'll carry paracord and my bank line. By bank line I've got it at dollar stores. You can get it at different department stores and so on. And same thing as the paracord. This here is a must. I have two headlamps in here with extra batteries. Very, very important to have lighting whenever you go out into the wilderness. You do not want to wander around after dark in the wilderness. You can trip in a hole, you can puncture an eye. There's just many accidents that can happen if you can't see. So lighting, very important. And you may have to get up and get more firewood in the middle of the night because you misjudged. So very important to carry lighting. I have two headlamps just in case one fails with extra batteries. Next is this right here and this is a one liter single walled stainless steel water bottle that the lid is removed. You see that this has been put in a fire. You do not want a water bottle that has plastic on it because you put it in the fire it's going to melt and it cannot be double walled. Double walled can explode. So single walled is definitely the way to go and this here you can boil your water and purify it then you can take your lid after it cools put it on and you could go if need be. So very important to have a one liter stainless steel single walled water bottle. I have a first aid kit in here and I bring it out whenever I'm training just in case someone may need a band-aid or need medical attention I am first aid trained so I carry this here uh, it's not on the list for you to carry if you want to bring out a personal one if you want to put a band-aid on and such that's up to you now also very important, this is rain gear. This is a poncho and leggings. So I'm covered head to toe with this and this is uh, my rain gear. Also very important to carry. Now I mentioned about carrying enough food and water. This is a cook kit that I carry because you may have to cook your meals. And if you bring anything that you have to cook you want to bring a cook kit, whether you're cooking it over uh, a campfire or if you're cooking on a gas stove and so on. Remember to bring something to cook your meals if you're going to need to cook them. Because nothing worse than uh, bringing a meal to the woods and you have nothing to cook it with and it needs to be cooked. This is what I bring out a lot. And this is the APG. I've also got a bandana here that I can use to clean out my pot when I'm finished. But it has a lid. I've got the gas in here. I've got the stove right inside. It's a very nice, um, very nice little kit that I can carry to quickly make me a meal. So this is just what I carry. But I have various cook sets and such that I use over a campfire that I use on gas stoves and so on this one here is just very convenient so it's just the one that I have out here today 
Next is leather gloves, also very important. To handle anything hot or working around a fire, very important. But also for gathering sticks and so on, you can prevent cuts with leather gloves. So a good pair of leather gloves, insulated ones, are also very good, especially around a fire. Now I train and set up a shelter with a six foot by eight foot poly tarp. I have spent many nights in all types of weather under a tarp shelter like this. And I teach this because from experience, it does, like I said, simple and very effective. So a six by eight tarp, I've just got it wrapped up in here. I've got cordages in here. And I've just had this old bag that I stuffed it in. So very small, lightweight, and compact, but this is our, gonna be our shelter. So that there can be found for a very cheap price, but can make a huge difference in your survival. Lastly, this here is a zero degree sleeping bag. I just have it in a dry sack, but this here is a zero degree sleeping bag that really increases your chances of survival big time. Anything above zero degrees, I don't need a fire. I'm not fire dependent. Anything below zero degrees, I say firewood. So very important to carry and especially for this overnight. Now this here, it's up to you if you want to use a sleeping bag or not it's going to be your own experience but it's great to have and if you do want to use it it's up to you so this gear that i covered is required for the course you do have to bring it the sleeping bag like i said you do not have to use it but be sure to bring one and make sure it's below rating of the temperature that is suggested so very important to have a good sleeping bag now we're going to go over this real quick and just show you what we have i've got a belt knife i've got cutting tools some cordage fire kit headlamps water bottle, rain gear, leather gloves, a tarp, six by eight tarp, a cook kit, and a sleeping bag. So there's not a whole lot here, but it's gonna be a lot of fun to learn how you use this minimal gear and spend the night even in extreme cold or the heat of the summer. I want to thank you for watching. Take care. All the best.